Hello everyone, this is Elite from Pride Info kicking off our Pride Academy webinar series where we share with you best practices for increasing your inbound marketing effectiveness. In this session, we're hosting Jean Hopkins, CMO at Continuum, with an impressive executive marketing experience at Marketing Sherpa, Smartbird Software, and HubSpot. Today, Jean will share with you some great best practices and examples on building effective calls to action and marketing content titles. Hey, Jean, the floor is all yours. Hey, thanks, Elite. Really excited to be here. Um, you and I worked extensively on trying to pull together 31 specific examples uh, to help our fellow marketers get started today on calls to action. Um, this is it sounds like a lot, 31, but we're hoping to be able to finish this entire presentation in about 10 minutes. And we have some very specific examples in the body of this. What we're trying to do is help you understand exactly what calls to action are. Um, really, an avenue to your landing pages. Think about a street in your front door. And the front door is your home page of your website. And the streets and everything leading up to your front door are trying to get you to take some sort of a specific action so that you can learn more about the products and services or offerings of your particular company. And really what a call to action is is little more than an advertisement of your offer. And if a landing page is really an offer page, what you're trying to do is drive that traffic, drive that website traffic directly to um, your landing page and get them to convert on a form fill out the form, convert, taking action. And that's what call to action really means. And we've got a variety of different images to help you think about ways in, that you could offer uh, products or um, information, content, if you will, to the people that are visiting your website. So for example, we've got donate, we've got download, we have view, we have see, we have find. These are all calls to action that encourage people to take the next step and go to a landing page. And after all, the best practices that we're talking about here, mostly what you're trying to do is take action, right? That's what a call to action is. We want you to take a specific action. We want you to download an ebook. We want you to register for a webinar. So these are all things that you want to think about. And one of the things, I have a personal pet peeve that uh, a lot of the um, marketing automation platforms have a default setting where the call to action is submit, um, S-U-B-M-I-T. And really, that is not what you're asking somebody to come to your landing page and submit um, to getting the information. So that's why we're trying to encourage you to have it be something more positive in orientation. We're also encouraging contrasting colors, that um, being able to get your eye to focus on what you want the, the visitor to take the next step. What action do you need them to do in order to move down the conversion funnel? And you're also trying to create urgency. So example, at Marketing Sherpa, we held a lot of events. So the email marketing summit, we would tell people that there's only 200 tickets left, for example. And that creates a sense of urgency because people want to be part of that. Or seats are limited at a webinar. Sometimes you only have 25 seats to be able to have people register. Or you may have 100 or 1,000. But you're creating a sense of urgency because people want to be part of something that's popular. Um, you want to be direct. You want to tell people exactly what are you going to be getting in exchange for giving your information. And we have a slide on that a little bit further into this presentation. We want it to be above the fold. And by above the fold, it's sort of newspaper parlance for a folded newspaper. Everything that's on the top half of the newspaper is more important, more urgent, if you will, than the information that's on the bottom half. So if you kind of think about the what you can see on your mobile device or what you can see on the screen of your laptop or your monitor, everything that's above the fold is what you can actually see. And if you're trying to drive somebody to fill out a form to take a specific action, you want to make sure that that form, that request, that information exchange is above the fold. And the lastly, we recommend that you use images. And you can use a picture, you can use an icon. It's something that is catchy and can get someone's eye. Now, you don't have to use it all the time, but it's a good way to be able to kind of test some of these different ideas, test the language, test the colors, test the, the images that you're using. And 
here's a few examples of some CTAs. We promised you 31, and I, well, Elite and I did count all of the individual calls to action, the images in here, so there are 31, and here's some more examples. But what we were recommending, as I said earlier in the best practices, is starting the text with a verb. You want to make your calls to action actually have action. Um, you're trying to convey that sense of urgency in order to get more clicks. So we have search, view, sign up, see, donate, learn more. These are all words that are encouraging people to take the next step. And indicating a specific action. What you want is this kind of equitable exchange that what are you going to get? I'm going to give you my email address, I might give you my telephone number, the company that I work at, but what am I going to get in exchange for that? So this Firefox download uh, call to action is a good example of you're going to download this, this is what it is, this is the, the, the type, the, the, the rev version that it is, it's free. Um, what is the size of the file? The fact that it's in English, this particular particular one. What other things that can you get with that particular call to action? Um, here's another one, see plans and pricing. You're going to be able to sign up in 60 seconds. That's pretty awesome and it tells people exactly what they're going to get. Another thing is talking about contrasting colors is that what you're looking for is a way to make it pop. That if it's on a landing page or it's on your home page and you're trying to get people to learn more, to sign up, to download, um, try it free now, a good way to make it look, if you just look at these buttons that are parts of the calls to action in, in order to get people to take the next step, it's very clear that these are popping off the page. And another thing is that a lot of times people don't make the whole call to action clickable. They only make a portion of it, like the link line in there, clickable. What you want to do is have the whole image clickable. And for instance, here's a HubSpot page where we're saying, you start your free trial now, here's the steps to filling out the information, and what are you going to get? What are you going to get in exchange for this? And we also have some social proof here with a, um, uh, uh, Noel is talking about the, the fact that it, what you're going to get from HubSpot and why HubSpot is so awesome. So you have that degree of social proof. And another thing is that you might want to think about is when you're asking people to fill out a form, to include your privacy policy in that particular segment. And you can see it here on this form. It allows people to feel that you're not going to sell or use their names in ways that are not part of this entire process. Um, and Elite, we talked quite a bit about the different kinds of titles that you have and collateral. Um, you you very, think very strongly that a lot of marketers don't realize that a collateral title could really be um, a call to action. Would you like to explain that a little more? Sure. So when a visitor uh, comes to our uh, website or our blog, they often see uh, a few calls to actions that we want to highlight, but naturally we cannot highlight all the marketing content that we're creating, especially in this era where content is king. So they go to a resources page or they look if they're on a blog uh, in the recent posts or relevant posts or some uh, sites might even list, you know, go the extra mile and, and list some next steps. But in any case, they'll see a list or a bunch of titles. Most often a company cannot afford itself to have the title and a significant uh, abstract. So they might have another sentence. And then the visitor comes into the site and they see all these titles. So these titles basically become the call to action. Because it's the call to action to click on it and actually read it. And that could be a blog, but it could be also an ebook that we want to promote that would actually generate a lead for us, a marketing lead for us. And this is why it is so important to use the principles that you discussed and you outlined uh, before when we're thinking of or designing the titles of our marketing collateral. And, and you know, you bring up a good point. So I, I'm going to talk about how at SmartBear uh, we used the uh, Bright Info widget on our blog because we knew that if someone was coming to a blog post, so here's a, a picture of the blog uh, along with the little pop-up of the 
Bright Info widget along with some other titles on there that the title of the blog post is what does it mean to be a Boston geek so we have the Bright Info widget tied into that and we have these three different titles but we also have more and we have another three titles that we're encouraging people that okay so they might read the blog post they they might look at the masthead and become a data driven testing ninja as an example but really what you're trying to do here is you're trying to show all the different kinds of content something that might actually pique their curiosity and have them take the next step and this is this is where um, the calls to action become so critical because the value of the title is getting people to kind of take the next step isn't that what you were talking about earlier exactly and even in this case where uh, the bright info solution offers recommendations for collaterals that are relevant and a perfect match to the visitor even if that is the case and the match is perfect and what the widget is offering is indeed content that is relevant that is exactly what the visitor is looking for if the title would not be as appealing as it should they won't click that's it and one of the cool things I liked about the widget as well is it allowed us to be able to test different titles and figure out what worked, what didn't work. And then with the different personas, we had five different product groups at SmartBear. Um, what's the most appealing? Because by using the widget in the blog and finding out which titles are the most appealing to our particular target persona, our target customer, then we could take that and use it as part of our email program because we know that it had the greatest degree of relevance. So that was immensely helpful in terms of optimizing our conversion efforts. And speaking of calls to action, you've got a great one right here. Exactly. So if uh, you guys are watching us now, interested in learning a bit more about how this dynamic content recommendation can help you convert your visitors into leads, you all you need to do is just click on this link and download the free white paper. And that's it. <laughs> it's a great call to action. Absolutely <laughs> fantastic. Thanks so much. This really worked out great. I learned something. You learned something. This, is, this was a great session. Thank you, Jean. It was really indeed an insightful session, and I'm looking forward to our next session. That's right.